This video is brought to you by the Gold Seal Online Ground School. Visit us at OnlineGroundSchool.com. Greetings, aviators. Russ Still here with Gold Seal. The topic of Class D radio communications comes up so often that we decided to put this video together for you and show you exactly how it's done. It's really pretty simple and the key is to get prepared in advance. In this clip, we'll fly into the Gwinnett County Airport near Atlanta and stop in for lunch. They make a mean bacon cheeseburger at the Flying Machine Restaurant, and it's one of my favorites. Two things we need to do to prepare. First is to copy down the ATIS frequency, the tower and ground frequencies, the traffic pattern altitude, and the runway numbers. Unless you have it memorized, get this stuff down on paper before you visit any airport. You don't need to be fumbling around with your iPad or GPS trying to look up airport information while you're piloting the aircraft. Make your job easy. Write it down in advance. The second thing you do to get ready is to have a plan for your approach to the airport. 15 or 20 miles out, go ahead and get the ATIS or AWOS information. Write it down. If it's an ATIS, it will have a discrete letter assigned to it and you'll need to include this letter when you call the tower. About 10 miles out, call the control tower. If the frequency is busy, just call in with your tail number and wait for the controller to call you back. Otherwise, jump right in with your call sign, your distance and direction from the airport, your altitude, the ATIS letter, and your intentions. Class D volumes do vary in shape and size, but generally they're cylindrical with a 4 to 5 mile radius. By regulation, you must establish communications with the tower before penetrating his airspace. Communications are considered established when the controller repeats your call sign or tail number. Okay, got all that? Let's take a look and see how easy it is. Okay, here we are at uh, about 2,800 feet. We're uh, inbound to Gwinnett County. That's KLZU. We're going to over there for a $100 hamburger. We're currently 12 miles to the northwest, so the first thing we're going to do is going to get the ATIS and find out what the letter is and barometric pressure for the altimeter and the wind. So here we go. Gwinnett County Airport. Gwinnett Air Force X-ray Town 1445 Zulu with 310 at 10. Visibility 10. Sky clear. Temperature 16, 2.7. Altimeter 290. 290. Special visual approach runway 25 and east. Land five on initial contact. You have information X-ray. All right, we've got X-ray. Uh, pretty bumpy up here on my way in. But we're going to call in, and what we're going to do, we're right now uh, about nine miles out. We're going to give them our, our distance, direction, the uh, ATIS that we have, and uh, our altitude, and we're going to tell them what our intentions are. So we'll go over to Gwinnett Towers Frequency, and here we go at the call. Remember, DDAA, distance, direction, altitude, and the ATIS letter. Gwinnett Tower, Skyline 42742 is nine miles uh, northwest at 2,800 with X-ray. We'll be landing and going to the restaurant. Skyline 42742, Gwinnett Tower, port a three-mile right base, runway 25. We'll report a three-mile right base for 42742. Okay, we're going to skip the downwind. He just wants us to jump in on the base leg, and we'll give him a call three miles out, and that call will be pretty simple. All we do is just say that... We'll give them the call sign and tell them we're three miles. I don't know if you're picking it up on the camera now, but there's the airport out there. It's about a seven miles out. And we'll start a nice gentle descent down to pattern altitude, which is 2,100 feet. Do that with just a small power reduction. Pretty bumpy up here today. We'll see how uh, we'll see how it is once we get down after the round out and see how it is oh, right over the runway surface. Hopefully it'll be a little smoother. November 42742, caution for more operations, left side at the approach end, runway 25, clear to land. 42742, clear to land. We were getting close here to the right base, and he just went ahead and gave us our clearance without waiting for me to give him that three-mile position call. I've got my power frequency in there, obviously, because that's who I'm talking to. I've got my, in the backup, I've got 121.8, that's the ground frequency, so as soon as I taxi off the runway, all I have to do is hit my flip-flop, and we'll be talking to the ground controller. All right, we're right here at pattern altitude here. I'll start configuring for uh, my landing descent. Do that with a little power reduction first. Hold the nose up until I get this airspeed slowed down a little bit. 
And then first notch of flaps goes in. We're on about a one mile base leg now. So I'll go ahead and give her another notch of flaps and we can start coming on down. Now, because it's a little bumpy, I'm going to ask you to give me a wind check, and let's just find out what the latest winds are. Twin tire, wind check, please. Uh, wind check 340 at 1-2. All right, 340 at 1-2, so we're going to have a, a pretty strong crosswind from the right. The runway heading here is 2-5, so that's just about a direct crosswind of 12 knots. So let's see how we do with this. Be landing intentionally with the right wing low. We'll see if we can plant that right main tire on the pavement first. We don't want to get the air underneath the wing. This wind's doing a good job of trying to blow me to the left of the runway, so I'm having to hold a pretty good crab just to try to stay on this center line. Notice I'm crabbing to the right into the wind. And there we are, down on the center line. I'll put a little bit of right aileron in there to help hold the uh, wing down. I'm going to roll down a little further because the restaurant. This is Kelly 742, turn left one able, taxi to the restaurant, and enjoy your uh, lunch. All right, 742, thank you. He didn't even tell us to uh, contact ground. We'll stop after we get off anyway, and we'll set the, we'll configure the airplane, and that'll include going to the ground frequency. And from there, we'll just uh, taxi on in. All right, we'll get a full stop here. And a 182 is here, so I'm going to open the cow flaps. Raise the flaps, give it some lean for the taxi, and go to the ground frequency, and we're ready to taxi on into the restaurant. Just right around here on the right, a couple of hundred yards. Try to stay right on this yellow line for the taxi. And here's the taxiway off to the left. This is where I will leave the movement area onto the non-movement area. Hopefully in the video you'll be able to see the whole short line here. I've got dashed lines so I can just go right on through without stopping. Once I'm on the other side, I'm now in the non-movement area. This is where uh, we can taxi the airplane and move it without having to talk to the ground controller. There's the restaurant straight ahead. Position over here, and I'll swing her around. All right, we're all lined up here. Wish you guys could join me, but I'm going to go in and have a good lunch. Talk to you later.